Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to feed you guys in good health. Personally, I'm fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. Maybe you could let me know where you are watching the video from. And by the way, let me know the name of your local market in the comment section. Maybe you could be coming from my village. <laughs> William Samara Proto embarked on a three-day tour of Nyanza. Two days were in Gusi region, that is Kisi County and Yamira County. And he concluded the Gusi tour yesterday. And personally, if you ask me, the tour of Gusi region was a complete flop. And I'll do a comprehensive analysis about William Ruto's failed mission in Gusi. Then William Ruto was supposed to go to Nyanza, but in Korea, which is Korea North. I mean, Korea East and Korea West. You know, Luo Nyanza, Nyanza, we have Luo Nyanza, Kisi, and Korea. So William Ruto decided to go to Korea side. That was his initial plan. But after the flop of the Kisi tour, William Ruto team yesterday added two more constituencies, which is Uriri constituency and uh, Rongo constituency. So William Ruto today went to Korea region and then visited the two constituencies which is Uriri and Rongo. In this video I want us to do a critical analysis of William Ruto's trip to Migori and I'll focus more on the Luo side. Before we do that in case you're watching this channel for the first time please take a second or two click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And by the way, I'm still reading your comments. Your local market, please let me know in the comment section. Maybe you'll find someone who you share the village with on the channel. And I also want to ask you guys to continue supporting the channel. And stay on a bit. I want to give you some serious analysis about this visit. First of all, let us begin by looking at William Ruto's program for the day. You know, the program was that William Ruto was going to Korea side. And of course, in Korea, you know the kind of promises which Ruto was supposed to give him to give them. The people of Korea have always advocated for their own county to be carved out of Kisi. In fact, that was one of the recommendations during the Building Bridges Initiative process. So it was expected that William Ruto was going to make that promise to them again. So they petitioned Ruto, and Ruto told them he's going to ensure that Korea will have a county. Let me put it to you guys. That's not going to happen unless impunity or unless a kind of BBI, constitutional amendment, is, is done. Then from there, he then decided to go to Uriri and Rongo. And you know, for example, in Uriri, I think he visited three or four places. In Rongo, also three or four places. Which means William Ruto covered. You see, like, if a president is coming to a constituency and he goes to two or three centers, that's normally a serious thing. So which means William Ruto really took his tour of Uriri and uh, Rongo seriously. For Uriri, it was the first time in their history they were hosting a sitting president. No sitting president has ever toured Uriri. For Rongo, they are okay because the Zekayo Yugi comes from there, so they are used to power. There's nothing new to them. So for Vorongo, they are okay. So that was the program. Now let us go to the leaders present. Who accompanied, who accompanied Ruto? during his tour of Uriri, of Korea, and of Rongo. I've looked at the team there, and I can clearly tell you that William Ruto has made his mind that for Nyanza, he's not going to go with elected leaders per se, but he's going to go with the people who support his bid. That's why the governor for Migori was not invited 
to this event. The senator of Migori was not invited. Remember the first time William Ruto came to Nyanza when he visited Homa Bay, Seya and Kisumu. He even had the privilege of meeting with the elected leaders because they were invited. For this one, William Ruto said, no, I'm coming there, but the people I want around me are those who believe in me, those who are going to help me with my campaigns, which means William Ruto is already campaigning for his 2022, 2027 presidential bid. Because look at it this way, assuming the governor was here, assuming the senator was here, and these other members of parliament who are pro Rail Odinga, do you think the tone of the speeches would be the same? The tone of those messages would not have been the same. Even the responses from the people would not have been the same. And uh, William Ruto, being someone who understands the, the mindset of the Luos, he decided to give his team what they wanted, power. Because Luos love power. They were given the presidential jet at their disposal. They arrived. All of them took photos, pa, 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 shared, and they were happy. So William Ruto basically is trying to make them happy. Then something also caught my attention. William Ruto also paraded the Luos he has appointed to his government. And I think even in Kisi he did this, in Korea he did the same. But, you know, the people of Migori were not really excited about the people he was parading because William Ruto made appointments. The key appointments in government are normally the chief, I mean, the CS cabinet secretary, the PS permanent secretary, and the now chief administrative secretary. William Ruto has never appointed any person from Migori County to such a position. And my question is why? Is it because William Ruto is better with the people of Migori County? Because in the last election, Migori portrayed an image of people who are going to vote for Ruto. They would turn up in large numbers for his rallies. Whenever William Ruto would host events here in Kisumu, I know so many of my friends who are then professing to be UDA, who would always turn up. Why? Because of Okoth Obado. But they never voted for Ruto. So something always tells me that Ruto is not happy with the Migori people. They would rather go to CIA and give them cabinet secretary because they are honest with him. They never voted for him. Rather than Migori, who cheated him, but again, never voted for him. But he paraded those people. But the residents, they were like, no, Migori. So let's wait and see the kind of appointments William Ruto is going to make. I'm sure this, he still has um, some more appointments to make, maybe ambassadors, maybe some few directors here, I mean, uh, MDs here and there. Now, let us now go to the main thing, the messaging. You know, William Ruto, Rigedi Gashagwa, Kimani Shungwa, and all these other guys, whenever they get opportunity, they will always call Railo Dinga Mganga. Today, in Migori, and even in uh, Kisi, they were very cautious. In fact, the farthest Rigadi Gashagwa went in, in Kisi was about uh, Mutua Mandamano. William Ruto was today not the usual William Ruto. William Ruto was referring to Raila Dinga as Aguambo. Not Yule Jamawa Mganga, Aguambo. I also paid very close attention to another speech by Mudavadi. So Mudavadi was kind of uh, blaming Uhuru for not doing much with for Raila Udinga, which actually resonated so well with the audience there. So I want you guys to listen to Ruto because Ruto's message was a bit of uh, trying to appeal to the emotions of Raila supporters. And Mudavadi was again on Uhuru Kenyatta. Listen in to the two speeches before we proceed. Na mimi niko na ujumbe ya kutuma nyinyi. Mtanisaidia kufikisha ujumbe? Si unajua agwambo mimi niliunga yeye mkono? 207. Si mimi niliongoza election ya mambo ya agwambo? Ni kweli ama si kweli? Mimi nauliza nyinyi. Hiyo kazi tulifanya. Si ndio ilifanya Raila Odinga akakuwa prime minister wa Kenya. Tangu siku hiyo amepata kitu kingine kubwa kuliko hiyo ya prime minister. Amepata kitu kingine. Mimi nataka niwaulize. 
nyinyi watu wa Nyanza ni watume. Mimi ni waulize wakati mambo iliharibika na Agwambo akawa prime minister. Si mimi ndio nilipelekwa Hague kwa sababu ya mheshimiwa Raila Odinga. Ni kweli ama si kweli? Kwani Orengo ndiye alipelekwa Hague? Agwambo mwenyewe alienda Hague? Hawa watu wengine walienda Hague? Si mimi ndio nilipeleka Hague kwa sababu ya Agwambo. Ni kweli ama si kweli? Lazima tuambie ukweli. Sasa mimi nataka niulize nyinyi. Nataka muende muniulizie Agwambo. Sasa wewe bwana Agwambo, unauliza nini huyu William Ruto? Wakati ulikuwa unahitaji mtu ya kusimama na wewe, si mimi nilisimama na yeye mpaka akakuwa prime minister. Si mimi ndio nilipelekwa hii kwa sababu yake. Sasa si mimi nimejipanga namna hii na Mungu akanifanya namna hii namna hii si mimi ni rais wa Kenya. Ama namna gani? Sasa mimi nataka niulize bwana Agwambo. Mimi nilikusupport nikakufanyia campaign. Mimi nimewahi kukupigia kura. Mimi nimewahi kukushikilia. Sasa bwana Agwambo, kwa ile tu heshima ya binadamu, wewe utanipigia kura lini? Wewe utanifanyia campaign lini? Bwana unanifanyia maandamano. Ama namna gani? Si hata yeye anip na mimi nataka ni mwambie ukweli. Ama ni wache. Ni toboe ama ni wache. Mbore no hondeke. Mbore no hondeke. Huyo jamaa mimi nilikuwa nakaa na yeye kwa mikutano anaidi huyu Anaidi huyu Anaidi huyu Alafu anasema mniwachie Akiketi kwa kiti anapiga piga mguu na mna hii anasema leave it to me leave it to me Jamaa never mobilized anything for Raila in Mount Kenya My brothers and sisters we cannot reverse anything now You cannot reverse anything now No matter how many times you go to the streets or you go to the shop you cannot reverse the fact that elections were held in August 2022 Kenyans voted the international community was here they had observers nata juzi president wa, former president of ethiopia ambaye alikuwa leader of the igad observer delegation akasema kenya's democratic process has given pride to africa the other thing which is coming clearly is william ruto's politics of development You know this one thing which William Ruto succeeded doing in the mountain. In the mountain he succeeded in portraying Uhuru Kenyatta as doing nothing for the mountain but doing much for Nyanza. In fact today I listened very closely to Kimani Shungwa and I was shocked because Kimani Shungwa was one of the leaders who would go to the mountain and accuse Uhuru Kenyatta of developing Nyanza and neglecting the mountain William Ruto used that kind of politics to advance his interest in the mountain so i tend to think that William Ruto is keen on trying to persuade or win the people of Nyanza using politics of development in court and politics of money he did this and when he went to Migori when William Ruto went to Uriri for example When William Ruto went to Uriri he made certain pronouncements which uh, caught my attention let me see, just see if I can get them William Ruto announced that he's going to give Uriri high school a bus he also announced a 13 million computer donation and you know I, I was confused because later on he also talked of 100 computers which means each of these computers would go for 130,000 <laughs> at the 100 which makes it 13 million but then he then directed 
the cabinet secretary for uh, education <laughs> to ensure that they are procured and at the same time he said that he came with them then he's, he also talked of 20 trainers to be deployed at Uriri TTI which is good you know the technical training institutes for Uriri if they can get train trainers then that would be good then he also talked of equipment for around 120 million for Uriri TTI I don't know whether he will achieve that then he also promised 10 million for uh, Oyola primary school 50 million for level 3 hospital at Penyowacho and he also promised expansion of Gogo Power project at a cost of 3 billion and also 10 million infrastructure fund for St. Pius Uriri High School. So if you look at those pronouncements, unless someone will be following them very closely, then they are likely to add up, up add to the number of promises which Lebruto keeps on making. Some of these things can be easily be made through budgeting. In fact, Uriri MP and Polabur were members of the budget committee and they really managed to insert some of their development projects through that. But what is William Ruto's strategy? Simple. Win the hearts of the people through development. It worked for him elsewhere. The only problem Ruto has with Luos is that Luos are a bit different from Kikuyus. As much as they love Raila Odinga, they are normally able to know when you are lying to them. That's why you can't convince a Luo the way Ruto would always convince Kalenjins and uh, Ikoyus that rain comes from cloud. You know? So let's wait and see whether Ruto is going to succeed. But I have something which I really wanted to talk about. The This year, yesterday, I shared some photos of uh, Kenyans and they alleged that these guys were actually demonstrating. Those photos caused a lot of noise online. Kenyans were like, why would this guy do that? Because, you know, if you look at the security in this country, the only one where Kenyans interact with freely is the DCI using their Facebook and Twitter, Twitter handles. Kenya love those handles. The moment now they were engaged in politics, I don't know whether Kenyans will then go and uh, clap with them again or Kenyans will lose confidence. And then there was the arrest or abduction of Gaucho. Gaucho, the ghetto president, and Okanga Nuru were actually abducted earlier today, according to information. And I've just seen photos of them with uh, Dan Stan or Mari trying to secure their release or ensuring their safety. Because the idea of this arrest is to have them until Monday after the elections. So which tells you the direction or the new strategy which Ruto is trying to use to suppress the Monday demonstrations. Guys, I don't know what you think, but until next time, this is Lee McQueen. I have, I have lined for you guys several analyses which I want to do. One of them is William Ruto's failed mission in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Kisi. The other one is Raila's endgame. What is Raila Odinga's endgame with all this Mandamano thing? What is he really up to? Thank you guys and we are going to have live show today. So guys I hope to see you later in the evening at exactly 9.30pm Kenyan time. Tune in here. We are going to look at Raila Odinga's endgame. Bye bye.